Hey, how's it going? This is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. Welcome back. Another tutorial time. Yeah! Um, my last one apparently was a bit silly. Uh, I don't know. It, it just went wrong. Um, I thought I'd post it anyway because I like to post my mistakes, but it, it just went wrong. Loads of people sent messages in saying um, it's a bit early for April Fools. I, to be honest, I don't even know what that is. I've never heard April Fools. What what is that? Never heard of it. Don't know. Anyway, um, let's move on to today's one. I thought what we could do um, is look at something that someone else has done that I thought was really cool and make a make our own version of it. That's the kind of thing. So let me just show you kind of what I'm talking about here. So we can uh, bring up this. This um, I saw, um, it was linked on Reddit, um, and I, I like this. This is really cool. It's basically this guy, this guy here, Gareth was here, or it could be Gareth was sheer, but I'm guessing it's Gareth was here. Um, but basically he's made these really smart looking uh, kind of GIF loops um, using Cinema 4D, um, and I was kind of looking at this and I was thinking, oh, I wonder if these are all dynamic or or whether he's done them with Expresso, and looking into it, it turns out, yes, he did use Expresso to do it because um, the dynamic system can make you smash mice um, and other people that are close to you at the time. But uh, I kind of still love this, you know? I mean, these are great. Like, they just look so nice, don't they? They're the sorts of thing I could just sit and watch these. I, I mean, this, this one, I love this. I could sit and watch this for hours. Years. Anyway, sorry, enough of that. And, uh, so basically I thought, well, um, why not give it a try with the dynamics and have a little play and see what happens. And I gave him a shout, make sure that he was okay with me doing this, quite happy. So that was really good, really nice guy. Thank you for that. Um, but this was the one that I interested me. I thought this would be quite fun to try and, and do with dynamics. So I gave it a go, and sure enough, uh, I kind of managed to create something pretty similar um, using literally all oh, this is all done using real dynamics, um, lit with Infidio, and then tweaked in After Effects. So this is what we're going to try and do. Now, I'm going to be honest, I am dreading doing this tutorial because the dynamic system in cinema is fantastic, if a bit unpredictable, and like I say, it drives me slightly balmy at times. But we'll give it a go. And also, bear in mind, I'm going by this. I've not got any correct dimensions or anything like that. I'm literally, I'm going by this. So that's where we're going to start. So just to show you quickly, um, this is the scene that I ended up creating for that one. Um, and if I hit play, we will see that this, obviously, while it's a bit, a bit slower, is working. You can kind of see the bit of movement going on here where this is dynamic. Um, I've made a couple of ever so slight alterations to what the original is, uh, where I've added these little bits here to catch uh, this as it comes through. Um, uh, but generally, all in all, that will just work. And like I basically used that, like I say, to make that GIF. Um, you can kind of see it working along the top here a little bit better. So that's it spinning round, and it's taking that with it. So this is cool. Let's do it. We'll make a new one. Right, start somewhere near the start. Right, circle. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start. I'm going to build this. Right, uh, I'm going to build this using um, extrudes and splines. Um, so this is not an official properly modeling thing because uh, several people will go, "Oh, that's not the best way to model with polygons and uh, creates crap geometry and all that." Don't care, I'm playing with the dynamics and I need a quick and easy way to show you how to do it. So this is what I'm doing. Uh, plane uh, is going to be on XZ. That way everything is kind of going up and we can go into our top view here and we can do it like this. This will be nice. So 200, let's use that as our base starting number. That's fine. So I want to create a copy. So I click and drag, hold control, makes a copy of the circle um, and I'm going to these are roughly what I used last time. I think was that, or oh, it might have been 120 actually. Mm. Is it 140 or 120? It, 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 I don't know whether it matters. Um, let's do 120. Um, so there's our outer one. We also want the inner circles. So let's make those 20 for now. I might make those 25 actually. Okay, so we've created 
<laughs> that. Um, let's put the latest one into a cloner. Hold down Alt with it highlighted and it will put it into the cloner for you. We change the cloner to radial. And again, we're changing to the XZ uh, plane. Um, the number of holes I counted in, in the original model were 12, I believe. Um, and obviously, because we've done our two circles, we can do a bit of maths here. So 120, 200, I would hazard a guess that that should be 160, and that will be dead in the center. Brilliant. These circles I am going to reduce to 20. There we go. Now I am going quite quick, I know. Um, tough. Basically, otherwise we'll be here forever because the dynamics bit is probably going to be a git. So anyway, let's uh, continue. We have made that bit. So the next one I want to create is the... Uh, let me bring up the original every now and then just so that you can see. Uh, this is the, the next shape we're going to create this little dude in the middle here. So this is a, one that we will need to lose the parametric shape, unfortunately. So um, uh, make a copy of the inner circle. I'm going to shrink it down just by one um, centimeter in there, just so that it creates a bit of an edge. Um, I don't want it completely flush. That way it creates some nice shadows and beveling and stuff. Uh, so we'll create this circle um, and then I'm going to highlight it and press C to make it editable. Or you could hit this button over here, but C is just as good. We'll now go to points mode and selection tool. And I'm just going to grab this point here and just bring that in. If you hold shift, it makes it so it um, moves in 10 increments. So uh, I think 100 should be about right. That should be fine. Um, maybe I will make this... Uh, no, oops. I'll grab this, uh, just trying to remember the right shortcut key here. One of them. Oh, I don't know. Let's just eyeball it. Right, so uh, just going to move that up just a little bit there. Uh, something like that. I don't want to mess with this too much, so I'll grab the top ones, I'll just shrink those in just... Mm, no, I don't like that at all. No, let me just undo. Right, let's go back to here. And we'll move that in again. So, maybe... In... Let's go somewhere in between, about there, 105. I'm not sure if this... Is... Well, there is an exact science, obviously, to this, but I'm trying to avoid that as much as I possibly can. Uh, I'm not happy with that. Urgh, let's just move it there. There we go. Right. Now, we need to create another circle in the center. So we'll just have, grab a copy of our little one and we'll make that one 10. That's cool, it fits. Um, maybe we'll make it 11, just to be different. Right, okay. We need another one of these, which is going to be our nub, I guess we could call it. So if we move this across, hold on shift 160, we'll put it exactly in the right place. All right, let's just do some naming. So we'll call that one nub. Uh, we'll call this one center hole. I'm going to really struggle with the naming here. Um, bended bit. <laughs> uh, we'll call this one holes. Or hole. Inner circle. And outer circle. That way we know exactly what we're dealing with. Right, and we'll call this cloner holes as well, so it's easier. Right, brilliant. Uh, finally, that center hole, we're gonna make another copy of that. We're gonna call this one pole, and we'll make that 10. Um, and I'll tell you what, we'll put another one of those, and we'll shrink that down to five, and call it the pole hole. Brilliant. Okay, so that is basically all of the first one done. So I'm gonna grab from the nub. Um, no, I'm gonna grab the outer circle and I need to put these into a connect object. So hold down Alt, outer circle, so plus inner circle plus holes. So if I just hide everything else, that gives us that shape. And because they're in a connect object, when we extrude them, it will treat these as holes. So that's what we want to happen. 
Uh, the bended bit is the next one. So let's just turn these back on, turn that one off. So this is gonna be this. We need to have the bended bit in the connect along with the center hole. Great. Um, and with the pole, again, that needs to be in a connect with the pole hole. Brilliant. So, outer ring, bended bit, pole. Okay, so there we go. We've created the first section. Next, um, we need to create the other side. So we're gonna use some of these bits again. This is a bit that's kind of tricky and just takes a little bit of playing with. So we'll, call, we'll create a copy of the outer circle. Uh, and I'm going to make it a bit bigger and move it. Uh, I'm thinking about this much gap in here. This is, if you think about it, the way this is going to turn, the uh, these pokey bits pass through when this is bended in, if you see what I mean. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if it does, but let's do it anyway. Um, so that's hopefully about right, uh, positional wise. So just so, so that we can see what we're doing a bit easier, I'm gonna turn off the rest of them. I'm just holding Alt, by the way, when I click on these. Uh, and as long as you make them both red, it hides them. Uh, and if you make them both gray again, then they come back. <clears throat> okay, so outer circle. Um, I want to create a rectangle, um, which if I put inside my outer circle and then make sure I'm back on object mode, I can just zero out my X position and that puts that in the right place. Um, let's do something like 40. Uh, we need to turn on that so that we can see this. Then our rectangle we'll put into a cloner radial XZ because that's everything's like that. And then just move these out a bit. Okay, so about there maybe. Um, let's make let's make our outer circle 240. I just want to make that a little bit bigger. And grab it and those and just move it a little bit more. Let's turn on our bendy bit. There we go. Right, let's go for that. Uh, this cloner, I want these these lined up so that I can see this a bit better. So I'll use here offset inside the cloner. I can just tap these and move them around till this one is straight. There we go, that's nice and straight now. So I need to just zoom in there and make sure. So at the moment that rectangle is exactly 40, which is the same width as our nub. So we need to just make that a little bit wider. So 42. Um, and then on this rectangle, I can turn on rounding. And maybe we can just move these out a little bit on the radius. I don't want to sit it dead against it. I want a little bit of room for, for manoeuvre. Um, but hopefully that should be okay. Uh, I'll tell you what I will do though. I'll just reduce to say two, mm, 250. Uh, the size of those rectangles, just so they're a little bit easier to play with in a little while. There we go. Okay, so about there is all good. Um, the next bit I want to do is create a circle around about the same size as this inner circle. So I'll have a copy of the inner circle. Again, um, I need to make sure firstly that I put it central to the outer circle, so I'll zero it out to there. Um, and cloner we'll put that inside there again we want to do a radial cloner and xz and let's move these out uh, i think five is the correct number actually yeah uh, as you can see the offset's wrong so we'll just tweak the offset until they are about central uh, let's just move these in to make sure that they definitely are maybe the offset one more there we go right so they're now dead center to those, so we can uh, move these till they're about right. This is kind of tricky to see now. Um, I don't think that's gonna be quite right, so I'm just gonna move them out a little bit further and maybe enlarge them a little bit. 
move them out a little bit further still and enlarge a bit more something like that possibly something like that right um, I also want a central hole as well so I'm going to just uh, with this one just create another circle hold down alt so that it puts it in the same position um, and we'll make this what I don't know 20 maybe 25 that's just gonna be a hole through the middle all right let's try this out so again we have to use um, a few little techniques here so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a um, a spline mask to essentially ball out this shape so these two here are our, if I just hide them so they're all gone so those two there is what we're using to cut out and that circle and we're going to cut them out of this shape here so we need to get these all together so again we use the connect object like we did earlier so connect put that in there and we'll put that in there as well then we're going to use the spline mask so with the thing we want to cut out uh, with we go to here and go spline mask hold down alt all right and we drop the outer circle into it now by default the settings won't just do it you have to come into the spline mask do mode sub a subtract b and make sure that we change to the XZ right so now we can see that we have roughly the right shape we might need to tweak a little bit but because this is all uh, still changeable we can do that quite easily so our cloner we can maybe here move this in a little bit 300 I don't know we'll just try and see what happens uh, right so while we're here our little hole so let's call this hole um, uh, and we need to make a copy of it so click and copy that out and this is going to be the pole for this side so uh, oh, I did the outer circle I didn't mean to do that um, hole there we go boom and copy and shrink that down so that this is going to be the hole inside of it so something like that um, I think maybe eight okay and we need to make sure that that's in a connect as is that and we'll just name this hole we'll say well, this one's the right pole we'll say this one is the left pole okay our spline mask let's group that so highlight it alt G and we'll call this right I don't know what the hell this thing is this so I'm gonna call it a cog I know I'm pretty sure it's not a cog but I'm gonna call it that anyway um, and over here all of this one G I'm going to call this one the right, I'm not, I'm going to call it the left cog. Again, I know it's not a cog, turn that pole back on, um, but I don't know what else to call it. If you know a better word, please enlighten me. Uh, right, so our whole of this side, I have just noticed I didn't reduce the size by one. There we go. Uh, finally, also, I re didn't remember earlier, my nub. I want to make sure my nub is one less as well than the hole. Again, same reason. I just want to see some definition. Right, let's see. So the next thing to do is the positioning of all of these. Um, so our left side one is fine. We just need to get the pole up. <laughs> um, it's this one, the right cog. So we'll move this up. I'm going to go up. I'm going to extrude about 30 centimeters so I'm going to come up 30 but then because I'm going to uh, extrude a little bit as well I'm actually going to come up 32 that allows me a bit of room to extrude uh, actually make it 33 just to be sure um, the pole in which case I want to come up say 50 yeah which puts it just above and the other pole uh, again we'll put that up to about uh, 45 for this side don't want them exactly the same height uh, okay so now that's all that bit done I uh, just thought I do want to save actually so I'm just going to quickly save this as test 2 we'll call it um, 
I don't want uh, if cinema decides to crash on me or something I don't want to lose what I've done so far <laughs> so um, now that we've done that we can start extruding all of this stuff and get some geometry then so let's start with the left side cog we'll expand that out basically we need to extrude each one of these things so we'll click the first one here's a nice tip if you're going to be extruding lots of things you can actually click and drag that out and then that will give you it just in a box here so that what we can do is go hold down alt extrude hold down alt extrude hold down alt extrude and then the pole extrude the cog here so the spline mask is what we're going to extrude and the right pole here now let's just go to display your red shading line so we can see what's happening now by default the extrude is all going in the wrong way uh, but again another nice little tip here we can just type in extra like that and we can highlight them all we can go to this one and turn that to zero right now this will get us pretty close um, but if we put 30 in our up movement that's kind of almost done it right let's go through these now one at a time and tweak them um, so our first one is our outer ring that one looks all good that's fine the next one is this one I actually want to put this up 60 so that, that sits up above uh, the next one is the nub again I'm gonna make that 62 so it sits up above uh, the left pole now this actually we want to go down so I'm gonna put minus 2000 just so it shoots off down there and uh, you know it's not uh, in our way anymore the position of it need, does need to come up a bit so we'll just we'll just grab the extrude and we'll just move it up this doesn't have to be exact I just want to be able to see it so that's fine I think is that doing as it should yes that's right I'm gonna shrink the the pole hole one more though but that's just me being picky um, what's next what's next so that nub does it looks like it's not long enough still so make that 65 yeah cool uh, da, 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 da. right so that's the pole then the right cog the extrude looks good on that there's a little bit of clearance that's fine and the pole here so we need to go minus 2000 as well so it disappears and again we'll just move that up so we can see it right cool now let's get some beveling because we don't want these nasty sharp edges so we'll go into caps fillet cap fillet cap or fillet uh, let's just do one for now with three on each uh, obviously this is the point where you start adding lots of geometry it slows down your mechanics a little bit but you need these if you need it if you want it to look pretty so now that we've done that we need to ah, we need to also make sure we on all of these extrudes we need to click constrain there we go that way it's uh, we shouldn't get any overlapping geometry okay so what is next we close up all our stuffs uh, let's call this one the right pole so that we don't get confused and this one is the left pole great okay um, I think I'm quite happy with that we can actually just hit render there and get an idea yep that looks good right let's get some uh, dynamics going on so let's just come up here and hit save and see what happens so firstly our pole let's get some the the hierarchy going on so we know what we're doing a bit better so this left pole we need to connect it to this left cog now I've just noticed that the position of my cog there has moved it's now here and it's something to do with when I created a uh, the the null I did the null off something that was obviously offset so I need to sort that position out so uh, a quick and easy way I think to do this will be to grab the original circle and make a copy outside of our system um, and then put this left cog inside of that one make sure we click the enable access button and we can actually now uh, highlight this left cog and we'll see the position data there we can zero that and that now gives us our correct position data for our cog so we can now take that out delete that circle and turn off that maybe there's a quicker maybe there's an easier way but that's a, a nice way to do it anyway so our left pole we need to go to simulate dynamics connector uh, if we hold down alt it will put it in the correct 
position for us. Um, and But as you can see, it's on its side. So we just need to press R for rotate and turn that up to 90 degrees. And it's nice because we can kind of see what it's doing as well there. Uh, we can do the same thing. We can just make a copy of this one, uh, put it as a child of the right pole, and then we just zero out the X value and it will put it in the right place. There we go. So let's put that in between that one and that one. Great. And then in the first connector, we connect the left pole to object A and the left cog to object B. Same with the other, but for the right side. Now, if we create a simulation tag rigid body and we go in here and make it a collision compound shape and make the shape a moving mesh. Now, what should happen when we press play is nothing. That's fine. That's exactly what I was expecting. So let's make a copy of that onto the right cog. Now, when we press play, nothing really seems to happen. And the reason, obviously, is because there's nothing telling anything to do anything. So we need to motorize this one, basically. So the left connector will highlight that and we'll do simulate dynamics motor. Hold down Alt and just take that connector out of that motor. Then the only thing we want to turn is this left cog. So we'll just put that into object A. Uh, by default, the speed is really fast and the torque is really low. We actually want that kind of the other way around. So we'll make it say 200 for the speed and our torque, let's ramp that right up. I want this to be, I don't want it to be phased by anything. So now, moment of truth, we hit play. So that was kind of good. We've got a couple of potential problems here though. Look, it's actually worked. Look at that. So we've got a couple of little things that we do need to, to uh, resolve here. Um, one is the fact that you can see this, uh, let's go into this top view, it should run a little bit faster. You can see that this is swinging around a bit too much, um, which is not so good for us. But there's a tweak we can do to sort that out. So under the left, the right cog even, um, which is this one, we go to our uh, tag and go to force. And here you've got one angular, angular dampening. No, let me get this right. Ang angular damping. Damping. And basically what that is going to do is it's kind of going to make the twist. You know, if you imagine something's really loose and easy to spin, put a bit of angular damping on it and it will make it a bit stiffer. That's kind of the, the point. So what exactly to put in there is a tricky one. So I'm going to just have an absolute guess at, at 80 and we'll see kind of what difference that makes because we don't want it too much because otherwise it won't spin. So that's kind of worked. It's still moving around a little bit too much. So maybe let's try 120. So you can see that's now it's causing the motor to kind of struggle a little bit, but it's now not swinging around. Oh, and it's now maybe it's a bit too stiff. So maybe 100. So it's, it's all about finding the right balance. And um, there's another thing that I did on the original um, as well which just helped this a little bit. So we'll do that right now. Whenever you're editing or, and it's animated dynamics or whatever, always go back to the first frame before you next make your change. Otherwise you'll get yourself in all sorts of problems. So, um, connector, 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 right pole. No, uh, right cog. That's the one. If we go into our spline mask, it's this rectangle here, which if you remember is our cutouts. Now this one, it's maybe a good idea to make a copy of that outside the system and hide it just in case you want to revert to it. But I'm going to make this editable by pressing C and go to points mode. Um, and then we need, just need to work out which side is which. So let's just grab one of these points and pull that. So nothing happens. So we know that that's that side. So if I grabbed this one and pulled that, we'd see that a change happened. So we know that this one up here is this side. So I'm just going to delete the points for the rounding and just highlight those two, right click and do hard interpolation. Not for any particular reason other than just to make it a bit neater. Uh, then I'm going to hit K to select the knife tool with a line. That's fine. <laughs> um, and I'm going to hit, just create a cut. I'm just going to create a cut, um, which I will now grab those points. Don't worry about that extra click then. It was an accident. You stay on point mode. Right. Um, I'm, going to click and drag and hold, grab all of these and press 
uh, T for scale and just move them out ever so slightly. I just want to get a slight little bit of angle on that. That's great. The next one I will do is now grab these top two, press T again, and I will stretch those out a little bit. Now I'll grab all of these and just move this down until, there we go, we can now just see that's adding slight points there. So hopefully that will work to scoop it in. I'll just move these ones down just a little bit just to pull that in and maybe move those ones up just a little bit so we keep a little bit of the geometry. Don't want it too sharp. Right, so let's give that a try. It is still struggling a little bit when it gets into the middle. So a way we can maybe fix that, let's first of all, let's give this a few more frames. So let's just give it like 900 frames and drag that out. Oh no, we need to stop the animation before it will let me do that. There we go, right. Okay, so the next thing we can try uh, here is actually um, in our two tags, by default they have quite low friction, but we can make that lower. So let's go 0.1 on the friction and also a quick save just in case <laughs> right let's hit play it's not quite turning in enough so something does need to be moved a little bit to make it turn in a bit more it's still struggling to get all the way around so maybe we need to do a combination of um, angular damping down to 90 and maybe the motor we can actually perhaps we can add another zero so that motor is just going to go for it. That 90 is maybe not quite enough, but it's working. There we go. That's definitely better there. See our motor's in the wrong position now, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so it's definitely working. So that's cool. Uh, let's just try um, the, to maybe 95. That looks like it's pretty good. Cool. There we go. Cool. Right, so that's that bit. Excellent. So now we need to move on to some texturing and some lighting. Uh, let's give this a go then. So again, we'll just do a save. Um, again, we'll just look at the original. So we've got a bit of a slanty angle. There's no depth of field or anything. And obviously, because it's a GIF, um, the, the frame rate's been reduced a little bit. Uh, so what we can maybe do is, let's tidy up our rig a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna just delete that rectangle for now because I'm quite happy with this, it's working. Obviously, before you render anything out like this, you need to bake it in. Um, but as what we're going to create is essentially a loop, we just need to make sure that we have two positions. Now, you do have to be a bit careful with where you're cutting your loop because of the fact that this is wobbling a little bit. So as long as you make sure you cut it whenever that nub is in the center here, then that everything will always be the same at that point, which means it will loop perfectly. So we know that we can go up to, say, 100 frame, 130, just as a guess. 130. And we know that we've got enough in there to loop. So we can go control D uh, and then go to dynamics and then cache and we can hit bake. And that will actually bake all that dynamics in. And then we can hit play. Now, if you want to find your cut in cinema, you're welcome to, but you're much better off. It may take a little bit longer to render. You're much better off finding the cut in, um, uh, in uh, After Effects or something like that. Excellent, right, cool. So next thing, let's create a camera and we need to get a cool angle. So easy way, right click on the uh, rotate the camera and we can turn it like that. There we go, brilliant. Okay, so the next thing is to light it. So to be fair, I'm gonna use uh, Infidia Pro because that's my product, you know, that's, I'm really proud of it. It's really good, works really well. So uh, let's go for something like this 
Um, if you're not familiar with Infidio Pro, please have a look at the website. So let's just make the floor a little bit bigger uh, and we'll go to illumination and illuminate that. That way, when I hit render, we're gonna end up with a very, very bright, white, clean floor background. Cool. Well, we do have this going on here. Oh no, that's out of the scene, that's fine. Um, right, so that's that bit done. The next bit is going to be um, a, a texture. So just a straightforward Chrome will do. Um, we'll do Legacy so that if, well, as it's R16, I'll just create a Beckman one. Uh, if you're in 15, just create, um, turn on the, what was it called? Reflection channel. And then give it a really high number, uh, like 100%, and then just add a Fresnel. There's plenty of other tutorials all about all of this sort of stuff, but uh, just for now, this is this is going to do me. Um, I just wanted to give this an ever so slightly blue tint, uh, something like that. Um, and I was going to reduce the this, this default specular a little bit. Okay, and that will probably be fine for that. Obviously, all I'm trying to do here is uh, replicate the original. I've done some others where I've been a bit, you know, been a bit different with it and stuff, but uh, this should do in this case. So let's just have a quick, quick render of that. Hmm. Okay, we need to work on this a little bit then. So we're getting an awful lot of reflection here. Of course we are, it's reflecting the floor. Um, I don't want it to reflect the floor, so I'm actually gonna turn the floor off in Infidio. So no floor. Now what we're gonna end up with. So there we go, right, we've got that. We haven't got enough reflection now. So let's just go into here. We need to get a bit more. Uh, I am just sort of messing about here now. Um, I want a bit more actual reflection. I think that was what I wanted to do. I'm kind of guessing a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit better. Right, that's more what I wanted to aim for. You will see why in a second. Right, so in Infidio, I am gonna change my global reflection. Again, if you're not using Infidio, uh, create a sky object and uh, put an HDRI on it or something like that uh, will vaguely give you this result. Um, whereas what I'm gonna do is use the white studio And there we go, that's gonna give me my nice, bright, shiny, non-detailed reflect, uh, reflection. Let's just put a bit of blur on that so it's very nondescript. Maybe pull the brightness down just a touch. Cool. The last thing I do wanna do is just take some of that blue out. It's a bit too much. Okay, so there's my texturing, lighting, and all of that's done. Hurrah for Infidio, eh? <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is go in and do some settings in here. So I'm going to change to the physical camera. Uh, I'm going to set the physical with depth of field on and then turn on... Uh, yeah, keep it on low for now. Uh, turn on ambient occlusion. And I'm gonna ramp this right up because I wanna see some nice detail here. So 30% contrast, 300. Let's just have a quick look at that. Okay, that's good. Um, in Infidio, I think I'm gonna turn that brightness, uh, contrast up a bit. And the brightness down a little. Cool, uh, and maybe go into the lighting. And just drop all of the lighting a little bit. Okay. Okay, uh, we can tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. To be fair, it took me a little while to, to replicate the original. Um, 
exactly, but this this will uh, this will get us somewhere for now. Okay, so so next thing we want to do is uh, render this puppy out. Um, so let's do output uh, 800 by 600. That will be fine for this, to be fair. Um, I'll do 25 frames. Uh, no, let's do 15 frames um, per second because a GIF, you don't want too many frames. If you were doing proper video, obviously do it full whack, but uh, all frames, 15 frames a second. So it's going to print, print, render 66 frames. Uh, da, 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 was there anything else I wanted to do? And you might want to put that up a little bit for your final render. Um, oh, I didn't want depth of field. Turn that off. <laughs> uh, maybe medium. Maybe I'll just come down a little bit on some of these settings. Something like that. There we go. Right, and just have another quick look, make sure that we're happy with what we're getting. Uh, I'm just going to move my camera a little bit more there. There we go. Right. Great. We are somewhere. Um, finally, we've got to choose a place to save it. So what I'll do is just uh, change it. I want a PNG sequence will do me. Um, and let's just create a folder to render this to. Um, so we'll call this uh, test three now, I guess. Um, and we'll call this uh, McCann, we'll call this thing 01. Mechanical, so I know I can smell it. Spell it, smell it. I'm having a really funny day today. <laughs> anyway, right, let's set this rendering. Okay, so obviously I didn't want to make you sit and watch that render out, so it's done it. Uh, it took about six minutes, so it's not too bad actually, but uh, if we just hit play, we can see that that's kind of doing what we want it to do. That's great, okay. So we can now go and we could just do it all in Photoshop or do it in After Effects then Photoshop, which is what I'm gonna do because I like After Effects and I know kind of how to use After Effects. So in After Effects, this is the first part. We need to import our PNG file uh, sequence uh, which is here. Um, don't just try and drag it in. It will only open the first image. You have to do it here and make sure that that is ticked and then import and you'll get all of your dudes there. Uh, the next thing is we changed it to 15 frames per second. So by default, that's coming up as 30. So we need to right click interpret main and change that to 15. Okay. Uh, the next thing is we can just click that to drag it and create a new composition out of it. Uh, so there's our image. So as we can see, that's animating quite well. So good. Um, so let's get that so it's looping, first of all. So I'm going to find the first position. Uh, we've got, we get quite a nice wobble in that second one. I might go for there. Mm, well, let's, uh, let's go for this position here. Um, so Alt and square bracket uh, will cut your footage there. And then just go back to the start of the, frame, the the composition and press square bracket and it will move to there. So then we need to come all the way round to about the one before it, which should be there. So Alt, square bracket the other way. Uh, now we've got, um, it looks like we've got an extra little bit, but it's fine. We don't need to worry about it. If we now just press N, it basically brings the comp into this position. Right click, trim comp to work area. Now make sure that up here on your preview setting, um, one is we want to make sure it's definitely doing 15 frames per second, which it is. The other is to click this button to make it so that it's going to loop. So that needs to be there. Then we can go to the start and RAM preview and hopefully we will see it just loop forever. There we go. That's it. That's now working. So that's now looping. Great. Um, next thing, let's just colorize it. Uh, I'll get it roughly um, like the, the original here. Um, I haven't spent enough time on it to really make it like it, but uh, this is how I would achieve it. Um, curves adjustment and a uh, da, 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 stylize and glow, right? And then just ramp that curves right down, something like that, and then just pull in or push up the threshold, pull down that one a little bit, and maybe take a little bit less glow intensity. And get it somewhere, I don't know, somewhere about there. 
not perfect, but it, it will do for, for now. So it's just a curves adjustment and, and a glow. Um, cool, so that's fine. So the next thing we want to do is render that out. So we'll render it as another PNG sequence in here. So add to render queue. Uh, if we click on the type here, uh, we can change the format to PNG. Um, and that's fine to press OK. And we want to make sure that's going to save somewhere. So it's inside my test folder. That's fine. So thing 01, fine. And then hit render. This should be a lot quicker than the other one. Cool, that's that done. Next, we go into Photoshop. So here, we do the same sort of thing. We do open, and then this was obviously the render out of cinema. So I need to go and find, uh, there it is, thing. So this was my render out of After Effects. Obviously, there's a ton more things you can do. You could add lens flares, and you could add motion blur, and do all of this sort of stuff in, in um, After Effects, which is why I like using it. Um, I've messed that up. Let me close that. Oh, it's because I wasn't paying attention. Right, so open. We need to, when we tick this first one, we need to make sure we tick this box here. So it's an image sequence, so we're telling Photoshop to open all the images. Uh, we're gonna tell it frame rate. We chose 15, so okay. Right, now what you'll get uh, is a little video group and a layer thing, and that's fine. If we go to window and then timeline, now we can actually kind of see what's going on. So we can see that we can drag this across, and that's our that's our little animation there. So if we click down here, we want to make sure that loop playback is on. That's fine, and we can hit play. If you want to do any more adjustments, perhaps you know like doing curves and glows and stuff in here better, do that then. Uh, but now we want to make a GIF out of it, so we will go to uh, File, Save for Web. And then it'll just take a second just to load it up, and there it is there. Important bit here is to make sure that under looping options, we have it set to forever. And then that way when we go play, it will always loop forever. And that's it. That's pretty much it. I mean, you can mess around with some of these settings, but there's not really a lot to change there. So we'll go save. Um, we'll save this as thing 01. Save. That's now saved. Now, obviously, to open it, um, you need to um, just basically run the file in Internet Explorer, or you can post it to uh, a website or a forum or whatever, but there's your GIF, and that's now basically done, and that's how you do that. Um, one thing to note is that that one is now 1.6 megs, because I did it 15. If you do something like 30 frames with motion blur and all of that, you end up with a 7 meg file. Um, <laughs> to be fair, it looks a bit nicer, but... There you go. There's the difference. Right. So anyway, I hope you had fun with that. And uh, I hope, you know, you can uh, go and do something cool. Again, I want to just give um, just a bit of credit to uh, the dude. Gareth was here uh, for making these fantastic ones. I mean, I'd have loved to have recreated this, uh, but I think the tutorial length would be around about six days. Um, but yeah, check this out. This is this is really cool. Um, there's some really, really good stuff. You can see the link there if you want to go and have a look at this yourself. Obviously, my site uh, is full of stuff um, and tutorials and things like that. Uh, there's uh, always something going on. Um, and obviously, in the shop, it's not just a shop. There's loads of free giveaways. Um, this one, Rake... Rake Rake, I can never say this, it's Calc My Render. It's a really useful tool when you're rendering out something. Uh, you can uh, put in how long it's going to take per frame, how many frames you're going to do, and it will tell you. So it just saves you having to work it all out. And obviously there's the NVIDIA Pro, uh, which is um, the lighting studio we just used. Um, also available is NVIDIA Dark. Um, which is a mood one, so you get some slightly different looks. So here I did a, a head in a microwave, you know, just to give you a slightly different look, but kind of, you don't have to worry about the lighting or do anything much. You just basically set it up, put it in the scene, job's done. Um, and there's a cool looking Ferrari. Anyway, so I think, uh, you know, enough of my own advertising. It's on the end of the tutorial. I've given you the good bit. So hopefully that's good enough. Uh, and yeah, like I say, join me on any of the social ones. Post your stuff. Let me know how you're getting on. I'll stop waffling. I'm going to go away and actually post this for you so you can actually watch it. Cool. Catch you later. Bye.